Good afternoon, True Girls and Moms. Um, my name is Stacy, like you may already know, and I was hoping that I would be able to get to some of your cities this spring on our tour, but unfortunately, I am grounded at home in Michigan, just like you guys, so. Hey, Stacy, Dana Gresh here, and I got my Michigan t-shirt on just for you. I love it. You might want to explain that because some of them might not know about the hands. Where are you? Where do you live on the hand, uh, Stacy? Okay, so if this is the mitten. I am close to the thumb, Southfield, right outside of Detroit. So somewhere over here. And that's what we always do as Michiganders. We put up that mitten so you can tell the person where you are from. Oh, it's a mitten, not a hand. Not a hand. Okay, so that proves that I am in central Pennsylvania <laughs> <laughs> on my farm. Welcome to our Wednesday home elective to get us through this quarantine. Um, today we're going to talk about animals and I'm wondering, do you love animals? Uh, do you know someone who loves animals? Do you love taking care of animals? I've seen lots of news stories about people that are going to animal shelters and adopting animals right now to make sure they have homes, um, especially in the areas where we're seeing a lot of outbreak with the coronavirus. Does God care about that? Does it matter to him? Hmm. Uh, we're going to look at the Bible a little bit today. We're also going to meet one of the critters on my farm. I have two Bible verses I want to start out with, though, um, to answer that question, does God care? The first is Psalm 5010, and it says, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. Think about that. God owns all, those are all his pets. Those are all his babies, his fur babies. They're his. Um, and the other thing that I want to point out, I'm not going to open the Bible to this, but in Genesis 1, after God created everything, the land, the plants, the ocean, the sky, the planets, the sun, the moon, he said, it is good. And he was finished creating everything. He said, it is very good. So he looks down on all his creation and says it is good. And then in the beginning of Genesis, he says, hey, Adam, Eve, your job is to take care of my good world. So I think it's our job to take care of the animals and the plants. In fact, the Bible says this about a righteous person. This is a really interesting verse about being righteous. So being right means living rightly, doing the right things. And the Bible says a righteous man cares for the needs of his animals. Proverbs 12, 10. So what I think that really means is that the answer to does God care about how we take care of our animals is Y-E-S. God cares how we take care of and feel about animals. Now, you don't have to be an animal lover like me, but you do have to be concerned about the responsibility we have for plants and bugs and animals and our water and all of that kind of stuff. The Bible says it. And today, every Wednesday, actually, we're going to talk about that. Yes, so welcome to our True Girl Live homeschool course that we're calling Animals, Plants, and Bugs. Oh my, I've been wanting to do that for so long. I want to do it again. Animals, Plants, and Bugs. Oh my. Um, so we're going to start our course off with a video um, about a tour for the Gresh Farm. And we want you to check out that video. We made it for our Masterpiece World Tour, but we want you guys to check it out now. And while you're watching it, we want you to leave us some comments that tell us which animals you want to know about and what you want to learn about them. So go ahead and do that now. Hi, welcome to the Gresh Farm. When God first made all of his creation, he looked at it and he said, it is good. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, when I pick a black raspberry on my farm and plop it into my mouth and say, mmm, that is good, what I'm really saying is, I enjoy it. And when God looked at creation and said, it is good, he was saying, I enjoy you. And I don't think anybody can observe God's creation without thinking it is good. And we can use God's creation to enjoy God. I don't know about you, but I enjoy God when I'm surrounded by critters. I enjoy God when I see my horses running in the pasture. 
They show God's power through their strength. It's incredible that those 1,500 pound bodies walk, let alone run on four skinny legs. But God designed their legs to work perfectly for their bodies. It is miraculous and it is good. I enjoy God when one of my mama llamas gives birth. It shows God's perfect timing and plans for all of His creation. You see, God created llamas with the amazing ability to give birth at a very specific time of day. Since the babies are born wet, they need lots of time to dry off and get warm before the cool night sets in. So God gave the mama llamas a timer so that they always give birth in the morning and the babies have all day in the sun to dry off and to be warmed up. It is miraculous and it is good. I enjoy God when I see our peacock strut his stuff. He definitely shows God's beauty. And God planned every little detail of that amazing tail. Each feather is made up of three colors God intricately wove together, bronze and green and blue. It's not just by chance. For each of the colors to meet to form that eye shape, it takes over 200 complex algebraic equations detailing how the feather will form just perfectly. It is miraculous and it is good. I love my farm because it's a place where I feel connected to my God. It's so easy to enjoy Him when I see these miraculous animals. Maybe you feel that way on the beach or in the mountains or when you're watching a sunset, or maybe you have your very own farm. The next time you're enjoying God's creation, take time wherever you are to notice just how miraculous everything around you truly is. And maybe even take time to say out loud, it is good. Okay, cool. Well, let's check the chat. Let's see what you guys said, if there's anything you want to learn. Yeah, I'm excited to hear. Oh, I know some sounds like somebody wants to be met. <laughs> okay, so we got peacocks, llamas, horses, basically every animal you have. All they want. the animals. Well, we're going to do a good job of trying to get you to meet as many of them as we can. Our course is animals, plants, and bugs. And we don't know how long we'll be doing this because we're really only doing this as part of our um, quarantine. We're trying to bring a homeschool elective into your house every day while everybody's homeschooling. And so what we're going to start out with is animal sciences. Now I want to explain what animal sciences is because it's actually a college level course. Now we won't be taking a college level kind of course. We'll be taking an easier version of the course. And so what are we going to be studying? Well, animal sciences is the care and breeding of agricultural animals. Agricultural animals are the animals that we raise for food, for fiber, for selling, for eggs, things like that. So, um, so we're going to be looking at animals basically on a farm. Some of the animals we'll be looking at were right there on the list. Horses, fainting goats, llamas, peacocks, mini donkey. She's not a very healthy mini donkey. We rescued her and that might be a really good week to talk about caring for sick animals. Um, she's just really fat mostly is the problem. Chickens and dogs. So hopefully some of you are excited about those animals. Yes, okay, but before you keep going, let me tell them this. So guys, um, I wanna get you ready for the rest of our courses this week. So tomorrow is gonna be Book Love with Cheesy Anderson. She's one of our lead teachers here at True Girl. And she's gonna be reading the biography of Gladys Allward. And Abby is gonna be helping her host that. Abby is like the biggest, book, biggest bookworm I know. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. You do not wanna miss that. And then, Friday, we'll be back with um, creative arts. And this week, you guys will need an empty or almost empty spiral bound notebook, pens, paint, color pencils, and any art supplies you have at home. And that is gonna be a lot of fun. And one more thing we wanna tell you is that if you post a photo on Facebook or Instagram of you participating in our True Girl Live electives, we'll select one each day to greet everyone. And it'll kind of look like this just to give you guys an idea of what we're looking for. So make sure you ask your mom to take a photo of you hanging out with us on YouTube during True Girl Live and um, have her post it on Facebook on her Instagram. But you have to make sure you tag us because that's the only way we'll know that you posted it. So take that photo, have your mom post it, tag us, and we want to see your sweet little faces. So make sure you do that, all right? 
But Dana, now it is time for our freedom stories. So um, I wanna read to you guys from John chapter eight, verses 31 and 32. And it says, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We want you guys really to remember that spending time in God's word will set you free. It gives you his truth, his peace, his love that'll help you kind of break free of that anxiety that our culture is really trying to put on us right now. And one thing I want to share my freedom story with you guys before we share another one. But mine is I was sitting the other day and sometimes when you're stuck inside, you start to wonder how long you'll be stuck inside. So I was sitting the other day and I was like, um, I'm coming off a tour, which is super fast paced. It's a lot of fun. We're always going, setting up, meeting you guys. And I went from that to just sitting still. And it just, it was a total shock. And so I started finding myself getting really anxious, just wondering like, how long is this gonna last? How long am I gonna be stuck inside? And I actually remembered some verses that my mom shared with me back in the day, and that really helped me. So I wanna share them with you guys right now. The first verse is Philippians 4, 8. And it says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And I really like that because it, it just helped me refocus and reminded me of what kind of things I'm supposed to be thinking of right now. I'm supposed to be dwelling on. And um, she also shared this with me. And I love this verse. It's Matthew 6, 34. And it says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I just thought that was really good because sometimes we get so focused on what's happening tomorrow when truth be told, we can only barely handle what's happening today. So it just, it was cool that my mom, um, I was able to think back to those conversations that I had with her and use those verses to kind of pull me out. And I want to share another freedom story we got with you guys. It came from Riley and I really like it. It says, um, I recently had surgery and me and my mom went on the Bible app and found lots of good verses to help me through it. And the verses that they found were Psalm 147.3, which says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And she found Mark 5.34, which says, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace and be healed of your disease. And I think that's so cool that she was able to find those verses to help her through that. So we definitely want to share that with you guys. And we want to hear more freedom stories. So I'm going to tell you guys how you can do that, how you can get them to us. So the first thing we want you to do to share your freedom story is start reading your Bible every day because you have to find those verses that set you free from that anxiety that you have. Then the second thing we want you to do is um, identify those verses, make sure you write them down, the ones that make you feel hopeful, joyful, peaceful, and just confident that God is in control. And then, are you ready for this? Because this is the most important part. This is how, well, no, not the most important, but it's how you'll get them to us. Um, we want you to leave us a comment in the chat and that'll let you, that'll let us know what your freedom stories are, what verses you found, and then we can share them the next day. So make sure you guys do that. It's so important that we're in God's word right now to set us free from that anxiety that we're feeling. So we are really excited to hear your freedom stories and we'd love praying for you. So um, right now, if you have a freedom story, go ahead and pop it in there. Or if you have a prayer request, because at the end of the day, Stacy is going to lead us in a time of prayer. So whatever you are feeling you need to bring before God, we want to bring it to God with you and just let us know about that. All right. It's time for animal sciences. Um, today is horse day. So I don't know if you're excited about that or not, but I am because I have loved horses for forever. And um, I'm going to have you a little bit of a quiz before we get started. So Fingers on the keyboard. I want to see if you guys can pass this simple test about what we call a horse, um, depending on their gender or sex and their age. Um, today, we're going to meet Truett. I'm going to tell you what kind he is. But first, what do you call a brand new baby horse? Go ahead, throw it in the chat there in the comments. Stacy, do you know the answer to that? What do you call a brand new baby horse? 
You are muted, my friend. <laughs> to be honest, I don't. Aha, that's awesome. Okay. It's a fall. You've heard that word before? Yes, I right? have. Yes. Okay. How about this? What do you call a young female horse? She's a city girl. I am. <laughs> a filly. I wonder how many, how many got that right. Okay. What do you call it if it's a boy, a young boy horse? You've heard this word. Cult. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now you might know this one. These two are a little easier. What do you call an adult female? You do know it. I know you do. Is it a, a mare or something? Yay! It, is. it really is. He scores. It's a mare. Yeah. Oh, great. I can okay. always say that wrong. M A R E. And here, I know you're going to get this. What do you call an adult male? Is it a stallion? Yes, ma'am, it is. Oh, 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 okay. Here's a hard, <laughs> hard, hard one. Okay, so stallions can be very difficult to care for. They can be very high strung. They were made to have a lot of testosterone in them, which is the chemical that helps them make babies. And so they're crazy with strength. They're brave. Some Sometimes in war times, when they needed to use horses in war, they definitely wanted stallions because stallions were not afraid. Um, but if you're going to care for a horse like me and you're a pleasure caretaker, I'm not a professional caretaker, it's not a good idea to try to take care of a stallion. So my horses are called, that's a mad horse, geldings. Oh, hold on. My gelding is acting like a stallion. Hey. It's time to meet him anyway. It's all right, buddy. Um, Trit, Truett is in here, ready to come visit you. Bob, you can go ahead and turn the light on. Oh, you already did. And what just happened is Triggs decided to come visit Truett. And Truett, Trig, Trig is the boss horse. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Trig is the boss horse. So horses have a pecking order and um, Truett is not the top of the totem pole. So he got scared when Trig came in. But these guys are gelded. That means they're a little safer. And I want to tell you a Truett story. Truett, um, I, when we bought this farm, God really blessed us with an amazing, it like had a clearance tag on it. And I was like, my childhood dream of having a horse is going to come true. So saw this beautiful horse online. He was gorgeous. But then when I got there, he did not look gorgeous at all. He was scabbed up, he was skinny, he was bitten up by all the other horses. He wasn't being taken care of. And um, she had just rescued him, that lady, from a really bad situation, but she couldn't take care of him and was looking for someone to do that. So we started taking care of him. We started feeding him and making him strong. And I'll tell you a little bit about that when I tell you what God taught me through Truett. God really teaches me through these animals as I experience things with them, I think of Bible verses. And I'm going to tell you what God taught me through this boy. He's a half Arabian. So it's a good thing he's gelded because Arabians are like extra stallionish when they're not. And you'll see when we get Trig out another week that he's super calm. He's a really sweet, calm boy. But Tr Truid is sweet too. He's just a little bit, um, got that fiery Arabian in him. Um, but I want to show you Truett's baby picture because he was the cutest thing. I contacted his breeder and said, I just got your horse. And she sent me his little baby picture. And I just love that. So we're going to learn a few things about taking care of a horse. First of all, three most important safety things. If you know anything about horses right now, I'm going to tie Truett up so that he can stand still while I work on them for you. Um, what are the three most important safety things about horses? If you know any of them, put them in the comments. Um, and I'm going to tell you what I think the three most important safety things are. I'll give you a second to start thinking. You can guess. If you don't know much about horses, you can go ahead and guess because guessing is okay too. The first thing that I want to tell you about is that when you are around a horse, you should have on the right shoes. Okay, really the right shoes are important. These are little steel toed, they're called chubbies. They're not cowgirl boots because I can't afford cowgirl boots. They're super expensive. And chubbies are not cheap, but they call them chubbies because they're like short cowgirl boots, but they have nice metal tips. 
because that guy right there weighs about 1500 pounds. And if he steps on my foot, which he could do accidentally, I have a broken foot. So smart shoes. Second thing, did anybody write this? I would love to know. Did anybody write that you should never walk behind a horse? Oh yeah, some of you did in the comments. We see that. Good call. Let me show you how to safely walk behind a horse. Now, my horses have never kicked anyone. They're super calm, they're super safe. I still practice this because if they would get scared, they might kick. They might not know that it's me back there. So what I, what I do is I make sure I'm touching them at the front. I make sure that they know I'm here. And then when I go around behind them, I keep touching them. I never stop touching them. And I stay really close. You know why I stay really close when I go around the back? Because when I go around the back, if I'm really close and he does kick, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna kick with him. I'm not going to get kicked. Does that make sense? So when, when he goes to kick, I'm just gonna go along for a little ride instead of him making contact with me. But as you can see, when I went back there, he's a really good boy. That's because I told him I was there and I stayed really close. So remember that. Now there's the most, most important thing I think. And some people don't do this because they're not smart is this little piece of equipment. Does anybody, did anybody write that in the comments that you should always wear a helmet when you ride a horse? Did you, some of you guys get that one? You should also always wear a helmet when you ride your bike. It might not look cool, but it sure is smart. I'd rather look smart than cool. I don't know about you. So you'll notice in that video that we shot that I had my horse helmet on. My horse helmet has had many years of wearing, so it's a little bit not cute, but it's smart. So I don't need to wear it today because I'm not gonna ride them, but I just wanna make sure you know those three safety things before you work with a horse. And I wish you were here so you could pet them and practice all those things, but you're not. So I wanna tell you about some ways that we take care of Truett's body and also an amazing godlike thing about his body. So the first thing when you have a horse is food and water. So every day, Truett and Trig get hay and I make sure their water is nice and fresh, very important. The other thing is this, horses are herd animals. They're not the kind of animal that's gonna be happy if you have just one of them. Like maybe you have just one dog. Now dogs are pack animals, but what they do and it's safe to do is that they become a part of your pack. So they will become a part of the family and their, your family will be their pack. Horses aren't like that, they need another horse. So it's not a great idea to have a horse all by themselves. Sometimes people will have a goat or a donkey or something like that as their companion. And I've heard that sometimes that works very nicely, but they need to have somebody to be their best friends. Um, the other thing it's really important to do is secure your horse when you're working on them. Now I just did that a minute ago and you cannot see my wonderful knot, but I used a special knot. And the reason I used this special knot is because if anything bad is happening, I can unloose it really, really fast. So um, it's very important that you secure them and also that you learn how to secure them correctly so that you can quickly move them if anything happens. So that's another little safety thing. But what I want to talk to you about today is grooming them. And specifically, I want to talk to you about their feet because that's where we find one of the miracles of God. So when I groomed Truett, and he was truly, truly muddy today. In fact, did we show you the picture of Truett on a not muddy day yet? Did we show that yet? I can't remember. I'm proud enough. <laughs> he was in the video. Look how beautiful he is. That's how gorgeous he looks when he's not muddy. But today it's very rainy and cold in Pennsylvania. So he is disgusting. In fact, I already cleaned this half of him off a little bit, but I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? You see those muddy spots? I left some on here for you to see. He was covered in mud. And the first thing that we do is we get a curry brush. This is a nice flat brush. See, it doesn't even have bristles on it. And we take out all of those pieces just because if you're gonna put equipment on a horse, like a saddle or a bridle, if you're gonna put it on a piece of mud, that mud could be under it and it would feel like a stone in your shoe. Nobody likes that, it doesn't feel good. So we would use this all over his body, which I've already done. And then I would use a different brush. 
working with the direction of his hair, just making sure that all of his hair is extra clean. There's some other brushes I use sometimes, but these are the two most important ones. Um, and that makes him safe to put saddles and bridles on. It's not all, it's not just about him looking pretty. It's about it being safe because you don't want a piece of something to dig into his skin. <laughs> See, he breathes. And also it's not safe for you because if there were a pebble in my shoe and you kept standing on my shoulders, eventually I'm going to be like, get off of me. There's a pebble in my shoe. So if there's that kind of thing under the saddle, it could be dangerous for you too. But I want to talk to you about his feet. In the video, you notice that I said there, there is a miracle that on these skinny, skinny legs, they can stand. Because this is 15 pounds, you guys. And look, this is how big around Truett's, each of Truett's leg is right there. And yet this massive, massive, massive body can be carried on it. For that reason, we have to take really good care of their feet. Now, I wanna tell you why it's a little bit miraculous. <laughs> and Truett would like you to know too. Why this is so miraculous is that um, that skinny little leg would have a hard time pumping blood up into the rest of the body, except that Truett has something on the bottom of his foot called a frog. I should have thought ahead to put a picture in the um, to put a picture in our slideshow for you, so you could see the bottom of a foot, a horse foot. But they have a little triangular piece under their foot, under the hoof that looks like this. It's called a frog. And God made that part of them to be able not only to pump blood up and down that skinny long leg, but it's a really important part of keeping them healthy. Now, dirt, debris, and rocks in that part of his foot also can be very dangerous because if we don't keep his legs healthy, he cannot stand. He needs all those for us. So the next important thing we're going to do is pick out his feet. It's kind of a gross job because there's rocks and mud and horse poo in there, but Never said taking care of animals was easy. No, um, you can see, I don't know. Do you think you can? Well, I might, I might, I don't know if you can see his frog. We'll see. There's the bottom of his foot. You see that? No, shoes. See this little square, this little sort of square shape there. You want to make sure there's nothing on either side of that. Just clean it out. True, it's been out here for an hour waiting for you. So he's a little bit, he's wondering, why am I here? I should be on a ride by now. So we do that with all four of his little feet. Make sure that they're nice and clean. And then we're ready to ride him. Of course, the last part of taking care of him before we ride him is just making him pretty. And that is brushing his hair. We're not gonna be able to make him very pretty today because he's a mud machine. So that's true. I'm going to see if I can bring him hot close to see you. I want to remind you about how sick he was when I found him. True, it was so sick that all his hair fell off. In fact, when it started to fall off, the vet told me, no, the vet told me that I had to help him. I had to rip it off. So I put hot water on him and slowly ripped all of his skin off because the vet told me that that was the best way to make him healthy. And when we first got him, he was so skinny that he, you could see his ribs sticking up and his hips were sticking up. And so we could only feed him for one hour a day, one hour a day, because if we fed him too fast, his legs wouldn't be strong enough to handle all of that. And um, today he's beautiful. You just saw a picture of him. I'm gonna put him back really quickly and then I'm gonna tell you because he really wants to go back, can you tell? He's like, can I please go back outside or could we go for a ride? But I've been standing here for an hour and a half for these two girls and I'm truly tired of it. So I'm gonna put him back before I tell you what God taught me about him. True, could you be a better behaved boy next time we visit with you? He says, what is all this equipment? We'll be right back. Oh, 
Okay, so what did God teach me through Truett? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's really cool that it has a little bit to do with the one Bible verse that one of our girls shared as a freedom story today. I, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, the first one, Stacy. what was that first one that the girl said? Um, what, what was the first uh, the one? The very first one she shared was Psalm 147.3. What does it say? Um, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. When I heard that, I was so glad today because it reminded me of taking care of Truett. And I learned something about God when I was taking care of him. I don't know if you've ever felt this way before, like you are a lot of work and your family's complicated and you're complicated and your life is messy. And maybe you feel that way because you're the wild child in your house and your mom and dad are always having to help you remember to tame your tongue or make good choices. Maybe you feel that way because you've been sick and people have to help take care of you. Maybe you feel that way because you have a learning disability or a challenge that requires extra time. Um, I had something like that in my life that made me feel like, oh, I'm such a lot of work for God and other people. And I felt that way for a lot of years. Even after I started doing better, I still felt like that. I was like, I'm so much work. I'm a weak link. And then I was taking care of Truett, and I had so much joy helping his body heal. And the Lord said to me, Dana, I mean, he didn't say this out loud, but I felt it in my spirit. I have had a lot of joy helping you heal. And that touched my heart so much. Second Corinthians 12, 9 says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest on me. You might have weakness. You might have um, dyslexia. You might have asthma like me. You might have diabetes. You might have um, just a learning disability that makes you learn more slowly. I'm not very good at math. I learn very, very slowly when it comes to math. I'm pretty sure I have the dyslexic version of math because my numbers are always getting mixed up it's okay to have those weaknesses that's where god's power shows up and he takes joy in helping you with your weaknesses so that's what um god taught me through Truett. i hope you enjoyed meeting him today even though he's a bit naughty and i hope you learned a few things about taking care of horses stacy Yes. Okay. First of all, I learned a lot of things. I didn't know all of that about horses. So I'm happy you did it. And I was able to be a part of it. Um, but now we're going to shift gears a little bit and go to our uh, prayer request time. So we've been looking in the chat, trying to see if you guys had any prayer requests. And I see we have one from Angela Brown. She said, my friend's dad went to get a test for COVID-19 and they are waiting for results. So I just want to pray for them. So we'll make sure we do that. Then, um, oh, pray for people that are sick in general. Yeah, we need to do that for sure. Kenzie said, I need prayer for my mom and me that we would be able to see each other because she works with elderly people and she can't see me. That's really hard. And Whitney, who has cousins in Italy, and we know everything that's going on in Italy. So we'll definitely pray for that. Danny, you have any specifically or? Um, I think just basically that we can really help minister to people. I have a friend who has COVID-19 right now. I'm really praying. I was up early praying for him and for his wife. Um, but that our team also would just have the energy to minister to you guys and help you stay connected. That's in, on my heart. Okay, great. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We'll pray right now. Um, God, I just come to you thanking you for just allowing us to connect together through these fun videos. I thank you for um, your creation that we got to learn about today and just being a part of it. It's just awesome. I pray that you would help us as we continue to navigate this time, Lord. It's, um, it's a different time for all of us, one that we have never experienced something like this. I pray that you would help us as we continue to grow in you, um, though some of our community has been taken away. I pray that we would continue to do these live events and tune in and just stay connected and see each other and have that, um, that peace that comes from being in community with other believers. 
I pray that you would just help all the people right now who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, I pray that you would just heal their bodies and just help them to have faith um, in you during this hard time. I pray that it would be um, a special time for them to seek you even more deeply. I pray that you would help Angela's um, dad's friend specifically who has been diagnosed, just give him peace, help him to seek you, help his body to fight it off. Um, I pray that you would help Kenzie as she's separated from her mom right now. They can't really see each other because her mom is working with elderly people that are really susceptible to the virus. I just pray that you would um, help them to find other ways to connect right now until she can see her in person again. I pray that you would give her um, just comfort during this time and that you would bring them together soon. I pray that you would help Whitney, whose cousins in Italy are experiencing the um, difficult time that this virus is causing. I pray that you would just um, guide them to you, help them to use this time to seek you and to grow closer with you. We pray for Dana's friend who has it as well, Lord. Just strengthen him and help him to seek you as well. I pray that he would reach out to her, Lord, and that she would be able to be a light um, to him, Lord, just showing your love through her for him. And I pray that you would just help our ministry as a whole as we continue to think of cool ways to connect with girls and moms. Since we can't be at our live events, Lord, we haven't stopped ministering. We're just ministering in a different way and connecting in a different way. So I just pray that you would guide us through that. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for bringing us together and allowing us to just worship you together and to learn about all the cool things you have in nature. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey Stacy, while we while we um, go out, I have a special guest that I want to bring on. Um, as we say goodbye, and we're going to tell you about some neat opportunities that you have to stay connected to us. I want to introduce you to Farmer Bob. Hey, how's it going? Hey, we're having a Borny Brave live TV show like this tomorrow night at eight o'clock, and uh, we're going to um, have all kinds of neat things. A movie review, father and son movie review of The Big Fat Liar. Oh, that's a good movie. And uh, well, we'll see if it's a good movie, right? Yeah, we're going to find out. We are showing how we blew something up on the tour oh. with Tannerite. And there's other things, lots of neat I things we're like doing. I don't like the word Tannerite. You know that, right? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, not, it's, it's interesting. So <laughs> join us tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. That'll be on the Born to be Brave tour YouTube channel. Uh, check our site or this site. Yeah, I'm and, excited. Uh, Help, make sure that the boys, I was excited yesterday. Some of the boys were working out with our, with our true girls, some of the brothers. That was awesome. So maybe some of the sisters can watch the live stream tomorrow night. Is that okay? Are girls allowed? Uh, Dana asked me at the last minute to help out. So I, I haven't gotten out of my pajamas yet. <laughs> so don't let him fool you. He's not getting out of his he puts on a like a nice dress shirt every day so he can have all his meetings on Zoom and he keeps his pajama bottoms on all day long. So don't let him fool you. Stacey, what else can they do to stay connected to us right now? Okay, cool. So you guys, I don't know if you've heard, we mentioned it last um, video, but we do have our online Bible studies that take place each Monday night with Dan and Cheesy. So that's something really cool you guys can do. It's called Overcoming Lies About Beauty and Worth. So make sure you um, sign up for that if you can. Uh, you have to register. It's in a private Zoom room kind of like this. So go ahead and find our social media and register, or you can go to mytruegirl.com backslash online. So that's one cool thing. The second cool thing um, is for moms, the Revive Our Hearts team is hosting a special video cast every morning at 9 a.m. on their YouTube channel. Um, so you want to make sure you tune in for that. It's hosted by Dan Aggression, Avent, Aaron Davis. So you, those are pretty cool. Fill yourself up with that truth in the morning, mom, so you can pour it out to your girl throughout the day. And our third one is how much we love you and how much we are so happy that you're tuning in to us and that you want to see our faces because we want to see yours. So stay healthy, stay safe, um, stay hopeful, have fun indoors and wash your hands, right? So we love you guys and we'll see you love soon. You. See you tomorrow. Bye.